Our last couple of categories of compounds are in the acid category. It's going to be the binary acids and ternary oxy acids. Acids, there are three definitions of acids. The Arrhenius definition is the first definition. That is any substance that will increase the hydrogen ion concentration in water. So H plus is our hydrogen ion. We won't find that in water. We'll find it bonded onto a water molecule, creating what we call the hydronium ion, the H3O plus ion. There are two additional definitions of acids that we don't need right now, uh, but they expand. Each one subsequently expands the definition of acids. So our acids we can take as being the hydrogen ion added onto an anion. A negative ion. So if we add it onto an IDE anion, an I anion, well, this um, is creating our binary acids. So we're taking our um, halogens, primarily our halides, and turning them into acids. And we have a couple elements. Uh, from the oxygen group that will also produce acids, uh, but they're not useful as acids as um, halogen acids are. Uh, but these need a aqueous on them to be called an acid. Without an acid, we're going to give them a binary covalent name. When dissolved in water, it behaves like an acid, so we give it an acid name. So these are the hydroacids. So we're going to have hydro, the root of the element, ending with an ick, and then the word acid. We have a, a short list. Oops, I already wrote one out already. So I guess I'll start from the bottom. So uh, selenide. Um, has a two minus charge. We add two hydrogens onto it and dissolve in water, it becomes hydrosalinic acid. What about it? Sulfur, sulfide, with two uh, hydrogens on it, dissolved in water, gives us hydrosulfuric acid. And this is not really useful as an acid. It has a very low solubility in water. The next one, iodide with hydrogen. If it's not dissolved in water, it's hydrogen iodide, but dissolved in water becomes hydroiodic acid. Bromide with hydrogen. Again, if it's not dissolved in water, it's hydrogen bromide, but dissolved in water, it becomes hydrobromic acid. Chloride with hydrogen, not in water, it'd be hydrogen chloride. In water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. Fluoride with hydrogen, not in water, be hydrogen fluoride. In water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. Now, these three of them, these are strong acids. And by strong acid, it means it completely disassociates in water. We cannot find any of the unionized compound in water. The other three here are weak. That means that they only partially ionize in water. Out of all of, all of them, the hydrofluoric is the one that I worry about the most. So this is dangerous.
in that it gives the worst chemical burns out of all of these. And uh, it's a very uh, reactive compound. It will dissolve glass for us. And that's actually where you can buy some hydrochloric acid is for glass etching. So this is all of our binary acids right there. There's no other ones. So uh, things that uh, uh, follow the rule of being eyed with hydrogen, oxide with hydrogen, that's just water. And the other compounds, uh, they are showing that the hydrogen is not positive by showing them, showing the hydrogen as being second. So the hydrogen doesn't come off these compounds uh, in water. The other category is the ternary oxy acids. So this is hydrogen with the polyatomic ion. So our polyatomic ions are eight ions or eight ions. Uh, the couple IDE ions do not follow this rule. So the eight ions, what we do is we add enough hydrogens to neutralize the charge. And when we do, it becomes an ic acid. So sulfate has a two negative charge, so we add two hydrogens, H2SO4. And for these ternary oxy acids, we do not specify that they need to be in water. Uh, for most of them, the compound itself represents a gas dissolved in water. Uh, so we don't need an aqueous present at all. And uh, the naming on this one is not from this, I'm not going to replace the eight with an ick. So we're not going to turn sulfate into sulfic. We're going to expand it a little bit, become sulfuric acid. And this is what we used to use in the, our old fashioned lead batteries in our cars. Phosphate, PO4, three minutes. We need three hydrogens to neutralize that charge. So we have a H3PO4. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to expand the name a little bit. So instead of phosphic acid, we have phosphoric acid. And those are the two that we're doing some expansion on the names. The other ones, we don't do that. Um, nitrate, NO3 minus, so we just need one hydrogen, HNO3. So this becomes nitric acid, we just replace that eight with an ick. And let's go the other direction. So from the name to the formula, acetic acid, itk, we're looking for eight ion. The eight ion is acetate, which is C2H3O2 minus. So acetic acid, we need one H on that. We put it in front, we don't put it with the other three hydrogens. So H, C2, H3, O2 for acetic acid. Perchloric acid, we need an eight ion. So perchloric ion. Is a ClO4 minus. So we just need one hydrogen here. So we have HClO4 for our perchloric acid. Now a lot of the eight ions have eight ions associated with them, one less oxygen. The eight ion becomes the us acid. So sulfite, SO3, two minus, you need two hydrogens to neutralize the charge, so H2SO3. We're gonna expand the name a little bit also, so instead of sulfus, it becomes sulfurous acid.
nitrite, NO2 minus. This need one hydrogen to neutralize the charge. So nitrite becomes nitrous acid. Hypochlorite, negative one charge, so we need one H. So that we replace the ite with the us and it becomes hypochlorous acid. And let's go the other name, the other direction. So we have our name for us acid. We want it, so we want it for ite ion. And I usually start memorizing the eights myself. For eight is ClO3. I take off one oxygen, I get ClO2 minus one for the chloride ion. So I add one hydrogen to neutralize the charge. I get HClO2 for the chloride acid. 